Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today card three in my So Amazing Stamp Set series featuring Lawn Fawns So Very Mice and So With Love Stamp Sets. I am bringing in the Lawn Fawns Just Your Type Stamp Set today. I actually used quite a few images from this stamp set. I'm trying to, I, I brought some other ones in as well. I will add those. I will tell you those sets as I get there. But I wanted to extend this desk from the You're Just My Type stamp set. It's not quite I mean, it's big enough to put the sewing machine on, but there's not a whole lot of real estate on the top of the desk if that's all I'm going to put on there. So it would definitely just be like one of those sewing machine desks from back in the day. And so to extend my desk here, I'm just selectively stamping the parts of it that I want, making sure not to add that one leg on there, and then making sure that my stamp is cleaned off and dry so it's not going to stamp a shadow image of anything I don't want. Making sure that I lined up the top of my paper with one of those guidelines on the Misty's stamping platform so I can just move it over and get everything to line up properly. Now I'm not going to go in with this one and try to re-stamp again because, you know, lining things up, if I get it right the first time on this one, I very seldom will I stamp it again because, yeah, I'm not always that great at making sure everything is lined up properly the more times I stamp. So I just go in with a alcohol marker friendly fine liner pen and fill in all of the rest of the little lines that might need a little bit darkening or connecting and that makes that a finished image. Now I am also bringing in the mouse from the You're Just My Type stamp set and then the chair is coming from the, I want to say it's Mary Mice stamp set. I will look, I will list it down below. And then I did stamp the stool from the Wickedly Perfect stamp set. I wasn't exactly sure which one I wanted with this one. I also brought in that shelf from the Wickedly Perfect as well. I probably won't use the items, but I wasn't positive at that point in time. And I also thought about bringing in those cute little mice from the crafty, or the art supply craft set, stamp set. I don't remember which one it was. I didn't end up using that one at all on this card. So I am bringing in some of the pattern paper from Lawn Fawn 6x6. I think it's Starry Skies Pack. And then that aqua sheet of textured cardstock from Lawn Fawn just to use as my flooring on this one. So I'm kind of laying it out on there. I want to make sure that I have enough real estate that it's not going to be, you know, that my sewing machine isn't going to be sticking off the top. But I want to do my sentiment on the bottom part there. And if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know I usually am horrible about making sure that I have space for my sentiment. But when I know I'm going to do like, you know, a specific word in bigger letters, I will go and do it first. It's, you know, to make sure that I have the real estate that I need. Sometimes I put a little bit more thought process in than I normally do. I'm always proud of myself when that happens. It doesn't happen frequently. So I'm bringing in the Oliver stitched ABCs for the word so on this one. Of course, we're doing it honey because that's how we roll. And of course, those, you know, die cuts are definitely going to stick to my magnet multiple times. And yeah, it's because I didn't want to stop what I was filming to go and cut out the letter. So I was like, well, I just need them as a placeholder right now. And I will cut those out when I get done with the rest. I wanted to make sure it was going to fit on my card front before I actually committed to cutting everything out. So I'm going to line this up in a way that I can move my piece of paper and not have to move my stamp because I want it to be the same all the way across. I had kind of toyed with the idea of doing a banner with the sentiment and then cutting it apart. And I opted not to on this one. I will later on do that one in one of my future cards. It was, you know, one of those. I had thought about doing it with this one and decided that I liked the idea of just stamping it and embossing it right on that base piece. Since it was just a plain base piece, 
and it was the floor, so I kind of decided to do it this way. Now, when I do this one, and I'm sorry, I'm off film here, I'm just lining it up, making sure I have the spacing right for my You Are and Amazing. And so once I'm happy with my spacing, I'm going to bring in my Tailored Expression Powder Tool here. It has been my favorite new powder tool for heat embossing. It's just bigger and bolder. I know the other one I think is the Rabbit Tail Design one, which I'd looked at getting, but I ordered from Tailored Expression, so that's where this one came from. So, And yes, I overstamped a little bit on the UR just got the like little teeny tiny dot there from the sew on there. I'll work with it. And this is where I mean I go back and forth with a scratch piece of paper just to make sure I'm not leaving anything behind. Now, I probably should have pulled it out and embossed my UR first. But I was, you know, trying to save a little bit of time and thought, oh, I can just do it this way. And then after I got done stamping the Amazing, I realized that I put that piece of paper over my pigment ink. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if it's going to hold embossing powder. It did. I was lucky. But I was, you know, I wasn't going to be able to line it back up again. Because we know how well I am at lining things up. So I... I tried it there, it worked, so I was like, okay, then I'll commit to doing the whole thing. I would have been fine not embossing it. I just would have not embossed it if it didn't work. But it worked, so I wasn't, you know, too worried about it. And I thought next time I should probably maybe heat emboss first, and then if I'm going to do the moving stuff over and putting the paper on top. I probably would have held a little bit more embossing powder on the UR if I'd have done it the other way. But it worked. It was fine. And so I'm going to go and figure out which color. I decided to go with a coordinating color. I did purple. I did three layers of white and then one layer of purple on top. So they have a nice, I think I did three. Let me look. Sorry. Two layers of white and then a purple on top to give it that coordinating color. I am going to bring in a little craft pick. This is the Tim Holtz one. It's not a pick. It's like the cutting blade. And I'm just going to pick off that little bit of embossing powder. It kind of lifts off the black. I probably could have color covered it with an embellishment on the finished card. It's really not that noticeable. I notice it because I know where it was. But for the most part, it looks like a little dot. It's not bad at all. I maybe could have gone in with the sand eraser, but the sand eraser tends to take off a little bit more surface area. And with the texture, I really didn't want to do that. So picking it worked fine. I did do the W and the S first. So my spacing next to my words were similar. And then just sliding the E in the middle of those. I'm going to add that onto my card base or my front of my card base here. And then I did do a stitched, these are simple stitch like they're from Trinity Stamps. So it's like a row of stitched strips for slimline cards. So I just found the smallest, one of the smaller ones. So there's one smaller than this one. But this one had the double stitching on the top and the bottom and I figured that would work for my baseboard so any I could have just used a plain piece of white there too but I just liked the stitch because it matched the stitching on my stitched rectangle and so I'm going to add my desk onto the top of my flooring here I just wanted it to be just touching the flooring because I really don't have a lot of real estate being that I put my sentiment there which was planned but this way it looks like it's just touching the floor. It's pushed up against the wall. And then I did cut off the bottom part of the sewing machine. And then I'm going to tuck that behind the top of the desk there. And then for my stool, I am using the stool from the 
Mary Mice stamp set. I think that's what it's called. And I'm going to pop that one up on some foam adhesive because, you know, I want to have a little bit of dimension. And this way, I think it's just, I only added the mouse and the stool on foam adhesive for this one. So everything else is pretty much flat. Of course, that sew sentiment, the sew on the sentiment is popped up a little bit, but it's not as high raised as that stool and the little mouse is here. I did come in and fussy cut a little bit around the tail just because it was covering up way too much of my chair. And so I will, you know, I'll, I like to do the fussy cutting on things when I feel like it's going to cover up a big portion of an image that, you know, I maybe want to show a little bit more of. So I added the mouse. I was like, he's so, he should have been up a little bit higher, but my stool was, you know, as that was the tallest stool I could find. So that was where he was sitting. I had looked at putting him on actual desktop, like in front of the sewing machine, but I opted for the stool. I thought he was kind of cheap there. And then I'm going to add in some spools and of course I cut off the bottom part of that one so when I put it down on the bottom I just made sure the part that I cut off was overlapping the white baseboard so you couldn't really see because you know I changed my mind it, it happens all the time so I'm going to bring in that cute little mug from the virtual friends add-on set and I did add the number one mom on here And then I'm going to bring in the ribbon, and the ribbons are from the So Very Mice stamp set. I think there's also a ribbon one. Is there a ribbon one in the, the Crafty Mice one? I don't remember what that stamp set's called off the top of my head. I know I did a card series with it. I want to say cute and crafty, but it's not cute and crafty, because that's the paper pad from Doodlebug. I, I don't know. So I did one on one side, one on the other side, because I kind of wanted those ribbons hanging off the sides there. If you'd see my desk, you'd totally understand, you know, that over cluttered desk thing. So I thought about bringing in buttons and they were just going to be too big. And I didn't want to use my little ones because I had a different idea for my little ones. And so I'm bringing back in those cave crystals from Trinity Stamps. It's just going to fill in, it kind of fills in perfectly all the little spots that might need just a little something something on the desk. And then bringing them down onto the floor because if you've seen my craft room, the, the desk has spilled onto the floor. And then I'm going to bring in another one from the virtual friends add on that little potted plant. I just thought it filled in that space nicely to the other side. So I have the spool on one side and then the little potted plant on the other and then adding in some more of those cave crystals to mirror the other side. Balance. I like balance. Things in three. So I have three on top of the desk and then three on each side of the floor, which makes three you know, clusters, I guess, of embellishments. And then, of course, we aren't ever finished until we add it to a card base. I'm good about putting them on card bases because if I didn't do it now, it probably wouldn't get done. I am going to bring in some score style tape here. I think this one is the two, an inch and a half one. Maybe it is the two. It might be the two inch one, but I don't think it's quite two. And then this is just because that one piece that I heat embossed on kind of warped a little bit and it curls up and this way it will help it to lay flat a lot better and I don't have to worry about the corners peeling up and then of course a little bit of glue for this case just to give me a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it is on that card front straight and then of course we can't be totally done until we add in some glitter I'm pretty sure I use diamond stickles for this one my other one is stardust stickles that are usually the two that I reach for. The unicorn one I think has a little bit more of a blue green tone to it so I use those for but the diamond dust one and the starlight sickles tend to have a, a clearer glitter to them 
if you will. So just adding a little bit here and there for some glimmer and shine. And then I am happy with how this one turned out. So there is the completed card. I hope you enjoyed card three in my card series. If you missed the first two, make sure to go back and watch them. And I will have the rest coming at you soon. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.